Hi, I'm Janet Ingle, the five minute read maker. If you're watching this on YouTube, will you go ahead and click uh, subscribe, please? And maybe even click notify. And that way you always know when I'm dropping a new episode and more oboe goodness. Um, today, I wanna to talk about uh, coming back to the oboe after a break. Um, and this is not going to be strictly read related. In fact, it might actually contradict um, other things that I have said about reads in the past, but I feel like it's an actually a pretty important topic. Um, for me at the end of my two week vacation that I just took, for anyone who has taken some substantial time off over the summer or over the pandemic um, and is seeing performances and rehearsals and concerts and school looming on the horizon going forward um, and is feeling a little panicky about starting back up on the oboe. This video is for you. I guess I have three main thoughts um, about this process of coming back and the first one is, have some self-compassion. It feels terrible to play the oboe after you have gone on a break. It feels terrible. It feels like a foreign object in your hands. Your mouth feels weird. It vibrates funny. The sound isn't what you're used to. And you have these beautiful high standards due to being a musician. You know what you want it to sound like. Maybe you've even spent the summer or the pandemic or the last two weeks of vacation, um, listening to oboe recordings or thinking about the oboe and like being uh, eager and optimistic about getting back onto it and thinking about the beautiful music you want to make. And when you start right back up, it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel comfortable. The air doesn't feel right. And again, did I mention how bad the sound can be or can seem? Um, and so the first thing really is to forgive yourself, to know that the physical comfort with the instrument is going to come back. It takes doing it for a few days. You have to play it, even though you don't really want to on the first day. And then you have to play it, even though you don't really want to on the second day. And you just sort of have to keep coming back for a few days before it starts to feel more familiar and more normal and you can start digging back into actual music or actual um, the actual challenges that you had set for yourself and wanted to move forward with. So self-compassion, be patient with yourself. The second thing I wanted to say, and here is where I will contradict some of my uh, basic five minute read maker principles, is let's not make this a knife problem. Your, if you were smart about your extended break, which I really never am, but if you were smart, you set aside a couple of reads before you stopped playing the oboe that you knew to be good reads so that you can come back to them and feel like relatively secure that at least the problem is not the reads. Now, I never do this. Um, right before my vacation, I played two, I think three straight days of Americana Pops outdoors. Um, and basically I just blew through all of the old comfy reads in my case because I did not want to be bothered making like fresh new lovely reads for outdoor pops. Um, and so I sort of unabashedly used up all my safety net of reads because I knew I had two weeks of vacation coming up and, you know, future me would take care of the read problems. So the result is that now that I'm playing again, I have some very old kind of almost dead reads and I have some new reads that aren't really broken in yet. And I don't have a lot in the middle where I'm like, oh, this one is a good read. I just know it's a good read. But I also know that all of the reads in my case basically work. I do know that right now everything feels terrible and it's almost certainly not a read problem. It's a me problem. My mouth feels weird. My fingers feel weird. I just got my new oboe back from the shop. And like, there's a lot going on that has nothing to do with reads. And if I gave in to the temptation to start scraping things, I feel like it would be very easy for me to scrape my reads, my perfectly fine reads, down to little stupid nubs and be in even a worse place than I am now. So my second principle for coming back to the oboe, if possible, use good reads. 
If you don't even know what your good reads and what your bad reads are, just use anything and don't involve your knife for a few days because they're all going to feel terrible. Okay, my third principle though, and I feel like this is where um, our global reawakening and our, our coming back to real life after such a long period um, is going to, there's a parallel here. And the parallel I want to make is let's build back better. Um, all of us, when we play the oboe, develop habits and all of us and all of us have bad habits sometimes right you intend to uh use your air to make the music but sometimes in practice you like sort of sit back squished in your chair and you let your embouchure do them do the work in a way that you know is bad sometimes um it when you're just playing all the time you get into a habit of like transferring some of the tension, some of the dramatic and creative tension that you're feeling in your music making into your muscles. And then you get like sort of squinchy and you get kind of over involved and you leave the oboe feeling like exhausted, achy, tired. Um, and I guess I would submit to you that this is not necessary, right? We, we know theoretically that we don't need tension in our shoulders to play the oboe. We know theoretically that we don't need tension in our neck, tension in our foreheads, ten tension in our temples to play the oboe. And yet we fall into these habits. Um, so as I am coming back now, um, I'm on maybe my third day of, of returning to the oboe, and it's beginning to feel a little bit more normal. But what I'm trying to be really conscious of is using good, comfortable oboe form, playing beautifully between notes, using exquisite integrity as I play, and when I get tired and I find myself like compensating and like biting or tensing or like doing weird things with my elbows, um, I stop because I have time. There is not urgency to uh, bring myself back to playing form. I have another few days before I actually have to show up in public and I know it will come. Um, instead of letting myself get into a eh, place about it, I stop. I take breaths. And when I come back to the oval, I want to come back to being effortless, being easy letting the air flow through the instrument, letting the sound come, letting it be easy. Um, because even I, right, the queen of unfussy, I get into weird habits and it is nice to take the time right now while I'm building back and feeling like a zero to build back in the way that I want to play, in the way that I want to be performing. Of course, our parallel, as we come back out of isolation, as we return to in-person work, as we return to orchestral playing, um, as we return to whatever our jobs were before we locked down for this long, um, the parallel is, I think a lot of people are rethinking some of their, uh, of the things that they accepted before. Long, long commutes, daily showing up at the office, holiday pops runouts. Like these are things that, we are allowed to question for ourselves now, I think, and that we are questioning for ourselves. Um, and as we have this sort of global reckoning with how do we want to be going forward, I feel like in micro, I'm bringing that to my oboe renaissance as well. Is it a renaissance if I took 10 days off? No. It is not. It's just like coming back to the oboe. Um, so those are my thoughts. Uh, when you are returning to the oboe, practice self-compassion. Do not make everything a knife problem when you know secretly deep down inside yourself that it is a you problem. And build back better. I hope this has been helpful. This has been a five minute read maker lesson. You can follow these short videos here on YouTube. You can subscribe if you wish, and I hope you do. Um, and if you want to reach me to order Reads or Cane, to see how we might work together in uh, one of my future programs, or to send me an email with questions about other things that I could answer in a future video, you can find me at JanetIngle.com, and I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.